In this video, we're going to go over solving absolute value equations, okay? So, uh, here we've got an absolute value equation. Absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 21, all right? So, most absolute value equations are going to have two solutions. There's two values that will work for x here, okay? We'll talk about the process, and then we'll work some examples uh, down the way here. So, step one, you want to isolate the absolute value expression, okay? It's already isolated here, so there's nothing to do in step one. Uh, if the absolute value is not isolated, you're going to use the same algebraic steps you would use to solve any equation, uh, linear equation, uh, to get this part of the expression by itself. Anything that's outside the absolute value, you want to move it to the other side, okay? Once you've got the absolute value expression isolated, you're going to do what we call case one and case two, all right? So case one would be that you set the expression inside the absolute value, which in this case would be 2x plus 5 equal to the positive value 21, okay? So our first equation, case one, would be 2x plus 5 equals 21, okay? Case two would be that we take that expression 2x plus 5 and set it to the negative value of what's out here, okay? So negative 21. Okay, remember, absolute value technically is a distance from zero, and distance has to be positive. Okay, so what's inside of here could be positive 21, the absolute value of positive 21 equals 21, and the absolute value of negative 21 equals 21. Okay, so we have to account for both of those cases. All right, now once we've written those two equations out, we're just going to do our last step, which is to solve each case. All right, so if 2x plus 5 equals 21, then x has to equal 8. So 8 would be one of the solutions here. Okay, if 2x plus 5 equals negative 21, then x would have to be negative 13. Okay, if you plug negative 13 in here, you get negative 21 inside the absolute value, which still makes this equation true. Okay, let's do some examples and we'll actually show the steps uh, on how to solve these absolute value equations. All right, and number seven, step one, the absolute value expression is already isolated, okay? So we don't have to do step one. So let's do step, or case one and case two. So case one, we take 4x minus two, set it equal to a positive six. Case two, we take 4x minus two and set it equal to a negative six. So once we've done that, we've got two little simple linear equations to solve. All right, let's solve case one first. We're gonna add two to both sides, then we're gonna divide by four, and we get x equals two. Okay, always check your work, plug that back in here, and you'll see that that's a correct solution. All right, in case two, again, we're going to add two to both sides. We're going to divide by four, and we get x equals negative one. Okay, again, plug that in. You'll see that that's a correct solution. So problem number seven here has two answers. x equals positive two works in the equation, and so does x equals negative one. All right, so pause the video, give number eight a try. All right, and then come back and check your work. Okay, in number eight, step one's already done for us. The absolute value expression's already isolated. So case one, we're gonna set five minus x equal to positive six. Case two, we're gonna set five minus x equal to negative six. All right, simple little linear equations. We're gonna subtract five from both sides. That gives me negative x equals positive one. Divide by negative one and I get x equals negative one, okay? Check your work, that solution is correct. Case two, subtract five from both sides, divide by negative one, and my other solution is x equals 11. Again, check your work, five minus 11 is negative six, absolute value of negative six is positive six. All right, so those are pretty easy ones because step one was already done for us. Let's look at these two, okay? Notice, on the left side, the absolute value is not isolated. I've got this negative 3 uh, that I have to deal with first, okay? So we want to add 3 to both sides first, and that gives me the absolute value of negative 2x plus 1 equals 14. So now the absolute value expression has been isolated. So let's do case 1, okay? Negative 2x plus 1 equals positive 14. Case 2, negative 2x plus 1 equals negative 14, all right? Solve each of those equations, subtract one from both sides, divide by negative two, and case one has a solution of negative 13 halves. Plug it in, check your work. 
you'll see that that solution is true. Okay, now let's solve case two. Subtract one from both sides, divide by negative two, and I get positive 15 halves as my other solution. Okay? All right, number 10. Pause the video. Try to do this when you're going to have some fractions here, so make sure you're uh, good working with your fractions. Be careful. Make sure you're getting common denominators where you need to, but then come back and check your work. All right, step one. We want to divide both sides by two, okay? That's going to isolate the absolute value on the left side. It gives me 13 halves on the right side. All right, case one, 2x plus 7 equals 13 halves. Case two, 2x plus 7 equals negative 13 halves. Okay, and now we're going to solve each equation individually. All right, so got to get a common denominator. When I subtract 7, I'm actually going to subtract negative 14 halves. That gives me a common denominator. So 13 halves minus 14 halves is negative 1 half. So 2x equals negative 1 half. When I divide by 2, remember, it's just like multiplying by the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. So my answer should be negative 1 fourth, okay? In case 2, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Remember, common denominator. Again, I'm subtracting 14 halves. So negative 13 halves minus 14 halves is where I get the negative 27 halves. Again, dividing by 2 is just like multiplying by 1 half. So my answer for that case is going to be negative 27 over 4, okay? Plug these values in. Make sure you go back to the original equation to check your work in problems like 9 and 10, because if you made a mistake going from step 1 to step 2, and then you check your work here, then you're not going to be sure if you found the correct answers or not. Always go back to the original problem to check your work, okay? So that's how you solve absolute value equations that have uh, solutions.